Well, welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this compilation we are visiting the Metropole Museum over in the Netherlands. So, to begin with, a fine example of the Rover P4, a slice of British classic car motoring here in this museum over in the Netherlands. So it's a real surprise to see that one clearly been used on several of the Mini Melia retrospective rallies. Next up, a fantastic little Auto Bianchi or Auto Bianchi uh, little van there. What a great looking little vehicle that is. My thanks to Ton for sending all these photographs over. That was really, really appreciated. And thanks for giving me permission to make up and share a video featuring these fantastic photographs. And next up, we have a blue and white BMW, a 1938 BMW 328 Cabriolet. Lovely six-cylinder engine hiding away under that long bonnet. What a handsome machine that is. Next up, a car close to my heart. I'm a big fan of these pre-war Alfa Romeos. This is an 8C 2900A, so a 2.9 litre straight 8 engine under that bonnet. What a magnificent sports car that is. And it dates to 1936. What a great, great car many many italian cars at this particular museum and well here's a bit of variety this is a spatz victoria 200 uh, spatz literally stands for sparrow in german apparently and uh, yeah that is a car i've never ever seen before and there are lots of cars like that in this particular collection of images so many vehicles we don't see over here next up the first of several trucks that feature in this museum a magnificent volvo f89 Apparently the Metropole Museum, it's a combination of museum and also car sales emporium. So many of the cars that feature in this upload are actually for sale. So it's well worth having a look at their website. Next up, a Porsche. A silver Porsche 356A Carrera. This particular car dates to 1956. What a cracking little car that is. There are also quite a few American cars on display at this particular museum. This is a 1963 Chevrolet Nova SS convertible. This had the inline six cylinder engine. Later cars were V8 powered, apparently. Look at that magnificent picture of a Bentley on the wall there. A very bonny little Fiat here, a little pickup complete with wicker baskets in the back. How neat is that? There'll be several other Fiat and Fiat based cars appearing later on in this particular video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the old classic car channel if you like this kind of thing, museum visits and so on. Now here's a very special car with a very famous first owner. This is a 56 Ford Thunderbird. First owner was Humphrey Bogart, the actor no less. What a great looking car that is. I love those porthole windows in the hardtops there. Really, really smart looking car. Another impressive truck here. This is a Fawn, the Fawn Verka, as it says on the front bumper there. All of the vehicles here are in amazing restored condition. This is uh, no exception and dates to 1951. Classic motorcycles also feature at the museum. We've just got this Mondial representing the two wheelers at this particular collection, but it's well worth looking at the website for this particular museum because there are so many other vehicles that don't feature in this particular collection of images. So yeah, I'll include a link to that in the description of this video. And one of the earliest cars to feature in this particular compilation is this magnificent 1908 Mercedes-Benz Simplex. A 65 horsepower two-seater raceabout. What an incredible car that is. 1908. That one dates back to. And of course, there's always going to be a few VW Beetles, and we've got a whole lineup of VWs here, headed by a left-hand drive six volt example. And that's an interesting opening roof on the yellow beetle just behind it, too. I've not seen one like that before either. Another chunk of British goodness here, a magnificent Bentley UU5580. Here's the UK registration, that's a 1929 4.5 litre Le Mans. A 
Okay, here we have a lovely Ferrari, a 250 GT short wheelbase, a left-hand drive car with that glorious Alfa Romeo in the background. And here's something a little bit more affordable, but maybe only just. Here's an NSU Spider. This is a rare little car. These were built from 63 through to 1967. Rotary engine. Quite an advanced looking car, uh, styled by Bertoni. Looks a bit Alfa Romeo-ish at the front there, which is perhaps understandable. We're back to the classic lorry haul again. And a very imposing Scania 141. What a great restoration has gone into that. There are some beautifully restored old trucks at this particular location. Back to VW Power and VW Corner, in fact, it seems to be a very good company. We've got a Carmen Gear here of 1961, the Coupe version. There was also an open top version of the Carmen Gears as well. One of those will appear a little bit later on. Back to Alfa Romeo, um, several Mercedes in the background, but look at this Alfa, what a beauty, an HC2300, Lungo, Lungo literally meaning long wheelbase, supercharged eight cylinder engine under that very long, very louvered bonnet, very, very swish indeed. And at the totally the other end of the scale, we've got this yellow machine. This is a Fiat based Fervez or Ferv Ranger, Available in two and four wheel drive, and around 600 of these were built in total. So, quite an unusual looking vehicle, and that's the joy of seeing, visiting some of these museums overseas. But this will be familiar to many British eyes a lovely AC, a Seeker. This one dating to 1962, the fixed head coupe version, I suppose, of the AC Ace. And this is a particular favourite of my youthful assistant. He very much fancies having one of these in his garage when he's a little bit older. And we're back to air-cooled VWs momentarily with this 23-window Samba, dating to 1962. Okay, we are back in Italy for this one. A beautiful, stunning black Alfa Romeo. This is a Pininfarina bodied Alfa Romeo 6C 2500SS. Um, this one was sold new in Sicily, apparently, in 1949. And there is that P4 Rover, just in the background. Oh, a lovely little pickup truck here. This is a Bianchi S9 Camionette, or pickup. And this pre-war beauty dates to 1934. Quite a sleek little number here. This is a BMW 328. This was bodied just after the Second World War by AFN, Fraser Nash, uh, the, uh, BM, the pre-war BMW importer. So it's late 30s chassis, but bodied just after the war over here in the UK. Now at first I thought I was looking at a Reliance, but no. Uh, this is the James Handy Van. These were introduced here in the UK, in Britain in 1929 and continued in production for about 10 years. The last one was built in 1939, and these are quite rare now. Very distinctive wheels on these. That's the giveaway that you're looking at a handyman. Oh, and what is this? A very strange looking BMW Z to the Jagdwagen, or Jagdwagen. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. The hunting car. And this one is from 1955. And look at all those wicker baskets in the back there. Slightly more familiar territory here. We have a Chevrolet Corvette, the fiberglass bodied Chevy, and this is a late C1 generation Chevrolet Corvette with the twin headlamps. The earlier cars just had a single headlamp per side and they were revised slightly with the twin setup that you see here. Staying with American vehicles momentarily, this is a circa 1937, very much modified and hot rodded Chevrolet pickup truck. What a great looking vehicle that is. Another lovely Porsche 356 Coupe here with its distant relative, the VW Beetles in evidence just in the background there.
Oh, this one had me scratching my head for a little while. This is a Steyr, a Type 55 baby. A four-cylinder box engine and built in 1939. What an incredible looking car that is with wood effect paintwork it would seem. That is just incredible. I was so pleased to see that. And how about this? What on earth is this? This is a Gogomobile Dart. These were built from 59 through to 1961 and actually developed in Australia. And around 700 of these were built. And the car alongside is a little PLP 50 that we'll have a better look at later. Now, these are usually referred to as the Fiat Jolly with the wicker seats there. It's actually the Fiat Bianchina Giardiniera uh, to give it its full title. But what a bonkers looking car that is. I'm not sure that would be too suitable in our climate, but in warmer climes, well, perhaps so. And a classic Ford now. We have a green and white Ford Eiffel. These were built by Ford of Germany between, I think, about 1935 and 40, based on the 10 horsepower 1172cc powered Ford Model C. It looks a bit like the larger V8, really, with that front end. And the first of several amphi cars, amphibious cars to feature in this particular collection. These were Triumph Herald powered, and something about those door frames looks a bit Herald as well. I might be wrong, but what an incredible looking car that is. Or should I call it boat? Well, a magnificent lorry here. There are lots and lots of Scanias that appears to be a favourite. Scania 110 here and again in beautifully restored condition. This is an Arctic with complete with trailer on the back as well. So that's a very, very imposing old girl. And what do we have here? This is the FMR TG500. FMR took over the production of the Messerschmitt KR200 in about 1956 I think it was and after that they were rebadged as FMR as opposed to Messerschmitt of the earlier vehicles great great car and staying with Germany we have another Karma gear but this time a left hand drive soft top version and again in beautiful condition and we can just see the green example in the background there too Well, another stunning pre-war Alfa Romeo here. This one dates to 1931. It's a 6C, so six-cylinder, 1750, 1.75 litre six-cylinder engine under that beautiful, beautiful coachwork. What a cracking car that is. And how about these? I remember a friend of mine's dad had one of these back in the 1970s. This is the BMW E3 Saloon. In this case, the 2500, a two and a half litre straight six powered car. Uh, top of the tree was a 3.3 Li with fuel injection. This is the 2.5 litre version. Very, very smart it is too. Um, now we have a Volvo truck. As you can clearly see here, the huge Volvo diesel badge on the grille of this Volvo 495. And the uh, Michelin man as well sat on the front wing. Uh, the Triumph GT6 shown here in Mark III form and there's that hot rodded Chevrolet in the background too. Very, very neat little cars these. Left hand drive this particular example, the 2 litre straight six engine under that bonnet. And the first of two Alfa Romeo Montreals to feature in this particular set of images. Again, thanks so much to Ton for sending all these photographs over and agreeing to me sharing them here. Alongside is a Citroen SM, which we'll have a better look at a little bit later on in this collection of images. Oh, and here's another slice of British trucking history or road haulage history. The incredible three-wheeled Scammel Scarab with the articulated trailer attached to the back of it. These were popular with British Railways and so on. Incredibly manoeuvrable vehicles. And the cab you can see is based on that of the, uh, the uh, lorries of the era. Okay, back to Italy now. We have a glorious red Alfa Romeo, this time an 8C, so 8 cylinder, 8C 2300 Spider. This one looks like it gets used quite regularly, which is always good to see. It's always a shame to see cars just sat in museums, not doing anything. And at the other end of the scale, completely in so many ways, we have a DAF Daffodil, the 32, uh, 746cc, and there's an air-cooled two-cylinder engine under that bonnet. 
What a great little car that is with the CVT transmission as well. And wowzers, there's been a few modifications on this Citroen DS, clearly converted for rallying. In particular, going off the uh, strip in the windscreen, the Barcelona to Dakar rally of 2005. And a magnificent Mercedes Benz here. What an incredible looking car that is. That's a 540k Cabriolet. And the uh, chassis was first built up in 1938. And an incredibly stylish car. I do love the little Mercedes emblems on the little poles just next to the headlights. You can just see them sticking up. And talking of Mercedes, another classic Merc, but at the much heavier end of the scale. This beauty here, what an incredible looking vehicle. That is complete with matching trailer. Absolutely stunning condition. Great to see these lorries being preserved like this. Somewhat smaller, we have a license built Fiat 500. This is the Steyr Puch, equivalent of the Italian Fiat 500. Now, this magnificent machine is, well, it's based on the BMW 327. This is actually an EMW 327 built in Eisenach, I think it is, or in East Germany, as is, or as was, um, circa 1940. Yeah, beautiful looking car. And how about this? You don't see too many of these. This is the Spanish built Pegaso Z102 Touring. These were built from 1951 through to 1958 and only 84 examples of these were built. So that is an incredibly rare sports stroke GT car. And wowzers, if you saw the classic cars in Germany upload from just a few weeks ago, you'll remember a couple of examples of Borgward commercial vehicles appearing in there. And here's another example, a flatbed version of the Borgward like commercial vehicle. Again, left hand drive. What a great looking old vehicle that is. Oh, we're back to magnificent Mercedes here. In Maroon we have another Mercedes 540k Cabriolet, complete with its supercharged straight eight engine under that bonnet. What a magnificent machine that is. Such an eye-catching car. And talking of eye-catching, wow. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in a the metal. The Mazda Cosmo Coupe, the rotary engine. Mazda Cosmo. Of course Mazda have been a keen exponent of rotary engines for many many years with the RX-7s in more recent times but this is the Cosmo. Another old lorry here what a beauty and this is a really early British lorry the Bean. Bean of course was also a car manufacturer but this is a super rare drop side truck version of the Bean and what a treat to see that one here in this particular collection. And talking of unusual commercial vehicles, occasionally you see Crosleys, the American Crosleys, at some of these museums. But look at this, an articulated version, but complete with period trailer on the back. Now, has this been used by a fire service perhaps somewhere? I'm not quite sure of the history of this one. So if you know, please pop a note into the comments. We've got a mighty Cadillac here, one of the Series 62 cars. This one dates to 1955. A very eye-catching Eldorado convertible beautiful stunning car and a very expensive one to restore if left to get into a poor state slightly earlier now this is a 1908 Itala 12 litre four cylinder engine producing around 100 brake horsepower this was originally built for the French Grand Prix Bond is back, the mighty Aston Martin V8. This one on the nail plate, so about 1972-ish, I would guess the date of this particular car. Oh, now this is a bit of an odd one, Holkra. I honestly know nothing about this at all. So again, if you can chime in with a bit of information on this particular vehicle, I think they're Dutch and built throughout the 1950s, about 1954, I think they were introduced, but I don't really know much about them, so uh, yeah, by all means add your comments below this video. And a lovely Alfa Romeo, this time not red, this one finished in green, it is a 6C, 
1750 SS with a Carlton body. So that is a, I think that's a British body on this particular car. Is that a British registration on the back? But yeah, very, very nice indeed. And we are over with Ferrari now. This is a 1952 Ferrari 212 Intercoupe, coachwork by Vignali. And the lovely, wonderful sounding V12 engine under that bonnet. Very, very handsome looking car indeed. I wonder if Volvo based their P1800 on that. Okie dokie, much earlier now. 1929, one of 33 built, and 1929 Mercedes-Benz SSK. What a sporting looking machine that is. Now we see Lancia cars around fairly often, but not so many of these. Look at this Lancia truck. Absolutely incredible. That must be a seriously rare survivor now. Absolutely amazing. Right hand drive as well. Back to classic Fiat now and a little 500c Topolino. This one, one of the facelifted cars dating to 1951. We'll see an example of the, this car's predecessor a little bit later on in this particular set of photographs. But yeah, very, very neat little car. Left hand drive as well. Now these are nice. This is based on the 3500 GT, but this is the, the later Maserati Sebring, built from 1962 to 1968. This is actually a Series 2 car, which was introduced uh, mid-run in about 1965, I think it was. Slightly different front end. Now this is one you don't see too often. This is the Glass V8. That is a Frua designed car. In all, 666 of these were built only making it a particularly rare car. Another funny little British car here, the good old Barclay. Some of these were three-wheelers, but this is the four-wheeler. Not sure if the headlamps are original, looks a bit different to some of the cars I've seen around. But yeah, right-hand drive, so presumably it spent some of its life, at least here in the UK. That's a Trabant Combi in the background as well. And staying with Britain for a moment, we've got a lovely 1934 Bentley 3.5 litre here. Very much from the Derby era of cars, originally marketed as the silent sports car. And yeah, a magnificent machine indeed. These are rather swish as well. The Mercedes-Benz 300 SL here in roadster form. This one is from 1962 and spent its early years in the USA. Left hand drive, of course. Beautiful, beautiful car, and seriously pricey to buy one of these now. Oh, we're back to lovely old lorries here. This is a beautiful now. Yeah, is this Cromhout or Cromhout? I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation, so please forgive me. Um, but it dates to 1951. What an imposing looking machine that is. Ooh, and you don't see these too often. A Lotus Elan Plus 2 in left-hand drive. That is quite unusual. I wonder what the story is with this particular car. I wonder how many of these Elan Plus 2s were exported in total. Very much vintage era now. We have a Rolls-Royce 40 stroke 50 horsepower. A Silver Ghost. What an incredible car, and this is the car that really sealed Rolls-Royce's reputation for magnificent engineering in those early days, over a hundred years ago now. We're back to Gogomobile. We've been here before, but this is the TS250, the two-cylinder, two-stroke powered car, uh, producing around about 13 and a bit brake horsepower, and capable of 47 miles per hour if you're feeling brave enough. Don't see too many of these around now either. And a side on view now of a magnificent Mercedes 300 Cabriolet of the early 1950s. Continuing this look at the Metropole Museum and the Car Sales Emporium, we have another beautiful little Fiat, the little Fiat Topolino. As I mentioned before, we saw the facelifted version from the early 1950s, but this is the earlier car. What a little beauty that is. And we saw the Asica just a few moments ago. 
And here we have the AC Ace or the AC Bristol Roadster. This is a Bristol powered version, um, dating to 1957. Um, no windscreen on this particular car. I can't quite see an aero screen either, but beautiful. And how about this? I remember seeing one of these. I've seen one of these at the Cape Stone Hall Classic Car Show. You may have seen those videos a little while ago. The Vespa 400, the French built car. Introduced in 1957 and produced until 1961. And somewhat larger is this, another example of the Series 62 Cadillac. This is the fourth generation Series 62. These were built from 1954 through to 1956, styled by Harley Earl. Left-hand drive car here, real, real luxury car. First glance, you might think this is an Austin Healey, but no, this is the Swallow Doretti, based on Triumph TR2 running gear, one of 276 built. Interesting fact, those strips down the side are off the Austin A40 Devon. That's something I learnt when I had an A40 Devon many years ago. Another compact little car here, another Fiat 500 Giardiniera, a little estate car version of the rear-engined Fiat 500. Slice of Americana here, and a beautiful, beautiful Ford pickup truck. What a great looking vehicle that is. Very much sharing its front end styling with the contemporary saloons of the day. That's quite a swish looking boat in the background as well. I wonder what the story is with that one. Look at the wraparound screen on that. Okay, we are back to the heavy metal momentarily, and we've got a diesel powered Henschel here. What year is this one? Can anyone translate the uh, writing on the side for me? Something to do with coffee, perhaps? Uh, back to smaller vehicles, back to classic Fiats, and we have the Fiat 600 Multipler. What an incredible looking car that is. Looks like it's going backwards or forward, you can't quite make your mind up. But yeah, that's great, and I love the roof rack on the top as well. The stacked headlamp Mercedes are a real favourite of mine as well. This is a 250SE, a 3.5 litre V8. Is that the W109? I think it's a coupe dating to 1970. But yeah, that is, that's a real quality car. Left-hand drive, of course, but really, really swish. And how about this? I've never seen one of these before on the Opel Record, soft top version of the Opel Record. Hands up if you've ever seen one of these before. This is the DKW based Devin, a US built car uh, based on the SP1000 chassis and running gear dating to 1964. Fiberglass body, I'm guessing there, looking at that. Uh, I wonder how many of those were made and how did this one end up back in this museum? Now, <laughs> what on earth is this? This is the Fiat 1100, bodied by coach builder Padovan. Uh, of Italy, but again apologies for any pronunciation issues, and this was just post-war, about 1948, this incredible looking car, what an incredible survivor. And this reminds me of the top trump car games in the 1970s that I grew up with, there was a bright orange Alfa Romeo Montreal in there, and it looked very very similar to this car. Good heavens above, there are some amazing vehicles on display here. This is the Voisin Biscuiter, or Biscuiter, um, a Spanish built machine introduced in 1953 and produced until 1960. Had a one cylinder, just under 200cc engine, and totally different. We have a Mercedes Benz 600, one of the grossers, the Mercedes Benz Grosser. This is the short wheelbase version of the two, you could also get a much longer one. This one dates to 1977, they're actually produced for quite a long time, these W100 series cars. But this 
is something that I would very much like to own. A lovely Fiat 1100 Familial from 1955. According to the website, this is up for sale for eight and a half thousand euros, which actually doesn't strike me as being too expensive, really, because it looks to be in fantastic condition. Now, we are back to very desirable Alfa Romeos. The bright red Alfa 1900 Ti Super is next. What a great looking car that is. And I can see a Jaguar XK parked right alongside it. Now, what do we have here? From 1930, this is a Derby L1 Cruiser. There is a six cylinder 1.8 litre engine hiding under that bonnet. I love the uh, split windscreen arrangements on there. It's a very sporting looking car indeed. I do like that. And we have another uh, Amphi car, the little amphibious car with its Triumph running around. Like I said before, those door quarter lights look very Triumph Herald to me as well. Let me know in the comments if I'm on the right lines there. These were German cars, but for some reason powered by Triumph. We've got a bit of heavy metal here from America. This is a wartime era GMC. The badge on the front is much, much later. It wouldn't have had that on originally. But yeah, so many of these came over to Europe during the Second World War, and many of them stayed and never went back home. Here's a bonny one. This is a Bianchi, or Bianchi, Bianchina Cabrio, or Cabriolet, dating to 1966. I think we've got independent rear suspension at the back there, judging by the, the, the camber angle there. That's a very smart little car indeed. Classic Jaguar time now, an XK150, lots of movers in the bonnet and is that a different shape at the back, has it got slightly modified bodywork at the back there, uh, I'd be interested to see another photograph of that one if possible. And beauty in red here, number 58, this is an Alfa Romeo Spider Corsa 6C 2300 and it's right hand drive. So I bet this one's got a bit of an interesting tale to tell. And this huge, mighty four-door sedan is a Series 2 Chrysler Newport. And it looks a bit like one of those old wartime ducks, the DUKW, a huge amphibious vehicle here, the Ampi Jeep. Again, if you can shed a little bit more information on this incredible looking vehicle. I know they did do amphibious versions of the Jeeps in World War II, but this is somewhat later. And we are back to glorious Alfa Romeos here, and why not a beautiful vintage Alfa here, a 6C1750 GTC. Very swish coachwork indeed. We've seen coachwork at the front like that before, but never with that rear body. Very, very unusual car. Classic Ferrari time, a V12 Ferrari, a 250 GT Coupe of 1958. One of these used to frequent our local pub meets, evening meets from time to time, and I think it's been sold now. That one was in black, but this one is in a lighter silver metallic. Oof, look at this, look at this amazing tanker, an MAN diesel tanker. So what year is that then? Is that what, 1960s perhaps, or maybe late 1950s? Um, answers on the postcard if you know any more about this one. What an incredible looking vehicle that is. Somewhat daintier in black and red is this Sayata 208S Cabriolet Special of 1952 and as you go through looking at these photographs always have a look in the background because there are many many more cars at this particular uh, establishment that won't feature directly in this particular upload okay this is a beauty this is finished in blue a simca 9 sport dating to 1952 it's a 1221cc engine under that bonnet but what a great little car that is that's really really nice and those wheels look way older than the rest of the car itself i think A mighty Cadillac here, 59 Caddy. That is a seriously large car. And 
Here's a very unusual VW. I don't know much about this one. It dates to 1973. Apparently it's got the 1600cc version of VW's engine tucked away in the back of it. Um, but if you can tell me any more about this machine, please do so. Somewhat more handsome in its styling. And it reminds me a little bit of some of the early Skodas. This is a Goliath Hansa 1100 and it dates to 1960. That is quite a handsome looking car, I think. But yeah, it reminds me very much of the old Skoda Octavias. Another beauty here. Uh, built with racing at, on the Mili Melia and at the Mort, etc. in mind. This is a 1930 Alfa Romeo 6C1750 Grand Sport six cylinder car. Another example of the three wheeled BMW iZetta here. Bit more classic commercial vehicle action here, and this is the Berner, or Berner, not quite sure how you pronounce that, uh, all the way from Switzerland, I believe. I remember seeing a tanker version of one of these for sale at a commercial vehicle auction held at Donington Park Racing Circuit way, way back, about 2005. I often wonder what happened to that. Okay, we are back to Britain again momentarily, and the Lotus Europa, a left hand drive. Lotus Europa, no less. Again, some really interesting cars in the background there. So, yeah, always have a good look in the background of these photos. Oh, I can see a Renault Dauphine, a blue car there on the right. And we saw the uh, the Alfa Romeo alongside, and here is a better look at the Maserati-powered Citroen SM, the V6-powered SM. An incredible car, really, really stylish GT. I can imagine it'd be quite the headache to restore one of these now. Oh, a magnificent tanker here, the old American Mac. What date would that be? Early 1950s, something like that, perhaps. But that's a, what an incredible vehicle that is. That is just, you know, I love the fact that they've got lots and lots of classic commercial vehicles as well as cars at the uh, Metropole Museum. And here's a beauty. Occasionally one of these turns up at the local pub meets as well. The Lancia Aurelia. Beautiful, beautiful two-door coupe. had a couple of ACs already and this is an AC Ace first put on the road in January of 1959 and a left hand drive example no less here's a low slung supercar of the 1970s this is the Maserati Ghibli 4.9 SS of 1971. I do love those two CVs alongside it, especially the one in the oversized toy box. That is great. Ah, here we go. Here is that Peel P50 built on the Isle of Man, the single person transportation for the what, late 50s, early 1960s. What a great thing that is. Didn't they go back into production or not that long ago? I've got a feeling you can buy those new now. Here is a mighty bussing truck. Uh, this one is up for sale at the moment, I noticed on the website. A bussing 6020 of 1961. Almost done now, so thank you very much for watching this particular video. And look at that, a very smart looking BMW. The 3200 CS, dating to 1963, styled by Bertoni. Up for sale for €90,000. What a great looking car that is. It's quite a chunk of money, but it'll still be worth that in five or ten years' time. So perhaps a better bet than buying a modern EV. Okay, back to Mercedes, and we have a 300 SL Roadster, another example of one of those. This one is up for €1.1 million. Euros. So, yes, I'll have to dig down the back of the sofa for that one, I'm afraid. This is the third example of the good old Amphicar. Uh, one of these used to turn up at a local event held near us and they used to go for a dip in the lake. But I haven't seen it for a little while now, so I wonder if it's still in the area or perhaps it's been sold on. 
but it's always great to see one of these being demonstrated. I can highly recommend it. Another classic Fiat here, another Fiat Jolly. And this one dates to 1952 and has the later revised front end compared to the earlier Topolinos. And to round out this particular video, a photograph presumably parked outside of a Chevy 3100 panel van. And what a great looking old vehicle that is. So thanks again for, to Tom for sending all these photographs over and for giving me permission to share them with the rest of you here on the old classic car channel. So thank you so much for watching. Please have a good look around if you like this kind of thing. Like, subscribe, all that kind of thing really helps the channel. And there'll be many, many more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.